Four years ago, uh, the commissions at the Port of Seattle and Port of Tacoma formed the Northwest Seaport Alliance, and I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that because it was the first partnership of its kind anywhere really in the world where two ports came together and formed this type of partnership. And so we are reaping the benefits of that today as we celebrate the opening uh, again of Terminal 5. Um, I want to recognize the managing members of the two commissions that are here. Commissioner Bowman will uh, recognize them by name momentarily, but I want to thank them for being here. And, and as well, uh, former commissioners that are here that were part of the formation of the Seaport Alliance. I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, District 1 Seattle City Council member Lisa Herbold, who's with us today. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for being here. The partnership with the City of Seattle is critically important to the Port and the Seaport Alliance, so again, thank you for your time. We're pleased to have staff members here from the offices of several members of our congressional delegation, and I want to thank them for their support, ongoing support for the Seaport Alliance. We're also uh, honored to have here Ed Denyck, uh, President of SSA Marine. Ed, thank you for being here with us today. Rich Austin, President of, of the ILWU Local 19, is with us today. Yeah. Scott Cromack, Executive Vice President of Orion Group, our contractor for this project, is here with us today. And Orion's Regional Vice President, Brian Matson. Um, again, I just want to say a few words about this project. So, as most of you are aware, we're seeing larger vessels calling the Puget Sound Gateway. And that's a good thing because uh, cargo means jobs and economic activity for the state of Washington. So um, this project is critically important because without the redevelopment of Terminal 5, we would not be able to handle these larger vessels. And when we complete the uh, development, redevelopment of Terminal 5, this will be one of the premier cargo terminals, not just in Puget Sound, but on the whole West Coast and uh, throughout the United States. It'll be a magnet for cargo coming through this gateway and the uh, valuable jobs that uh, come with it. So really excited about uh, this celebration today and getting started on the construction of this project. So with that, I'm going to invite uh, President of the Seattle Commission, Commissioner Bowman, who's uh, provided tremendous leadership uh, through many years and was instrumental in uh, formation of the Seaport Alliance to come forward and share a few words. John. Um, before I get started, I just want to take a moment and recognize a few folks that are in the room because they deserve a lot of credit for where we are today. Uh, my fellow commissioners, uh, Commissioner Fellman and Copkins, if you could raise your hand, I appreciate it. And then Commissioner McCarthy from Tacoma, I believe, is on his way. Maybe he got stopped at the gate because he didn't have his TWIC card. Um, but prior to them, I want to acknowledge some of my former colleagues, uh, in particular Commissioner Bill Bryant and John Creighton. Six years ago, when we started this project, they took the hard vote to decide to, that we were going to make this a strategic terminal and the hard vote to bring together the Port of Seattle with the Port of Tacoma on the Alliance. With that, I just want to talk for just a moment about what a really big deal this is. It's not every day that we get to break ground on a half a billion dollar project in this city. It is a significant deal. I was mentioning to somebody earlier um, in fact, it was Brian from uh, Seattle Partners that every city would love to have what we have right here, a deep water port, natural deep water port, and these container terminals that are assets of statewide significance. This is a really big deal for this region. The reason I care so much about this, and I think that most of you do as well, is because the jobs that we provide in these cargo terminals are jobs that provide economic opportunity for a range of folks throughout our region. We can have the Amazons and the Googles of the world, and that's wonderful, and we appreciate their business. But these terminals provide jobs for everybody. It means that you can have a working class city and have jobs. You can live in Seattle and work in Seattle. More importantly than that, though, again, they're assets of statewide significance. These terminals, while we might not think about Eastern Washington, I can tell you Eastern Washington thinks about us when they look at these terminals. So we need to be working together to not only protect them, but doing what we're doing today, reinvest in these assets for the future. 
But we need to make sure that while we're doing that, that we are doing it in conjunction with our community, that it works for our community. A couple of things we've done in particular for Terminal 5 is the investment in shore power. Shore power is the ability for the chips to plug in. Reducing the emissions It's a key part of our commitment to environmental sustainability. In addition to that, we have the uh, rail quiet zone, which is keeping the noise down for the neighbors. And a small thing I just learned today, I'm going to point over there, even our electric vehicles that the inspectors are using on the terminal, every aspect of our redevelopment, we are thinking about our environmental footprint because we want to be a good neighbor. And this is what we need to do is we're reinvesting in all of our assets. With that, I want to take just one moment to really thank again the people that are going to make this terminal successful. And I want to start first and foremost with Local 19, our great uh, longshore workers. If you guys can raise your hand, we've got a bunch of good people back here. These are the hardworking men and women that are making this terminal the most productive terminal on the West Coast to go with the investment, the half a billion dollar investment that we're making today. And in addition to that, I want to thank our port staff because they're the ones that are doing the hard work. And I know I've got Janice back there, who's our project manager. There she is. And she's got a team of folks working with her and others to do the, the engineering on this terminal. And you guys are working hundreds and hundreds of hours on this project to make sure that it comes in on time and under budget. And we are both on both of those fronts right now. And last but certainly, thank you, friend. And last but certainly not least, um, SSA, thank you for your partnership. You're our customer here, and, but you support all of our customers throughout the state of Washington. Our exporters, again, rely on you to make sure this terminal is operating well. And so, again, thank you for your uh, opportunity, for your partnership in making this half a billion dollar investment. We couldn't have done it without you. So, with that, I want to turn it over to you. Back to John Wolf. Thanks, Commissioner Bowman. So uh, next up, I want to introduce the other half of the Seaport Alliance Partnership, uh, Commissioner Claire Petridge, uh, President of the Tacoma Commission, and she's here to uh, share a few words with you. Thank you so much, John. It is such a pleasure and a joy to be here. You know, when you think about the beginning of the building of a terminal like this, you really don't visualize what it's going to be like the first day when you put the shovel in the ground or sign the terminal. Uh, the, the, we're not really putting a shovel in the ground, folks. I just wanted to know that. I, just, I get to be the historian at the, at, at the podium today. And I, I, I wanted to say, you know, what did we know before and what didn't we know? When we first broached this idea, and Bill Bryant will tell you that we were talking about it in Canada 15 years ago, but but we didn't want to say too much about that. That was a conference that we attended. We saw how, how challenging it was with, with our competition in the north there and said, hmm, what are we going to do about that? We, um, we always knew. I'm going to tell you the things we knew, the things we didn't know, or the things we thought we knew. <coughs> we always knew that Terminal 5 was our golden opportunity. It was the opportunity to sell the port in the city of Seattle and the port of Seattle Conceptually, we knew it, but we didn't exactly imagine ourselves standing here in this moment. So what did it take to create? What did we know in the creation of, this, of the Seaport Alliance? Well, we knew at that time that our ports were facing unprecedented competition. I say, yes, we were in Canada. We knew that that's where the competition was coming from. We also knew at that time that the Panama Canal was just beginning its construction on widening the canal. And we didn't know how that was going to affect us. We thought that we knew that, at least in the port of Tacoma, we thought that we knew that our greatest competition was Seattle. And in Seattle, we thought that we knew that Tacoma was our greatest, pop, uh, our greatest competition. And every time a ship went from one port north to one port south or south to north, we just knew that, you know, this was our greatest enemy. So that went on for about a hundred years or so. <laughs> and uh, then there was that day where it was like, as, as I said, we knew then what the competition was that, that we were facing. And it became clear that if our two ports could begin cooperating with one another, we could compete better. We could draw more customers here. 
and we could generate more economic benefit for the entire region. But it was a heavy lift. I mean, there were moments when you had to say, hey guys, just promise me you won't leave the room until we get one thing accomplished. That was kind of the way it went. Stephanie will agree. Um, I am so happy, actually, to have worked so closely with, with Commissioner Bowman and the other commissioners that, because we did work together and we knew that as difficult as it was, as difficult as it was to figure out how to make that alliance work, that it was right for the region and it was right for the future. And certainly I feel it at this very, very moment. We had countless meetings. We went to Olympia a lot to set, set the legislative pathway. And here, here we are. In Tacoma, we have completed a very, very successful project on the, on the uh, General Central Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And now we have a brand new project beginning up here in the North Harbor. So what else do we know that's happened in the Alliance in these four years that we've been in existence? Well, we know, well, number one, that our trade volume has grown. Our container volume through May of this year was 10% greater than it was at the same time last year. We also know that we've successfully implemented a clean truck program, and we're proud and very, very proud of that in our international terminals. This month, we know that we are initiating a gate efficiency program to handle the high volumes of cargo that come in during the peak season. And we're offering incentives to terminal operators to provide extended gate or, or hours sorry, between July and December of 2020. We know that we have welcomed, for the past two years, the Agricultural Transportation Coalition to come to our area. And as many of you know, the significance of that is that agricultural exports are absolutely critical commodities for us here in, in the Northwest Seaport Alliance. And we are lucky to have all those partnerships over east of the Cascades. So we're planning to visit some of them, actually, in the next few weeks, and look forward to that. 2018, this past year, brought us a record-breaking year at T18. And you're probably going to talk about this. OK. <laughs> all right. They surpassed 1 million TEUs for the very first time. And that, of course, was thanks to the really hard work and dedication of ILWU and SSA working together. We've got a new impact, economic impact study that has just been released. You want to know those figures? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> All right. We actually are supporting more than 58,000 family wage jobs throughout the state and a total economic impact of 12, kind of 12.4 billion dollars. That is something to be very, very proud of. So as the Alliance moves ahead, this is the first step in the opening up of Terminal 5, and we look forward to many, many more successes with our partners, with you um, in the years ahead. I thank you for everything that you do to make the Northwest Seaport Alliance a wonderful, wonderful place to work, to live, and to be part of our state. So thank you. Listening to uh, Claire and Stephanie's comments, I was reflecting on some four or five years ago when we were in the heat of the discussions around the formation of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. And I find it interesting that um, during that time, Commissioners Bowman and Petrich were the presidents of the two uh, commissions, Seattle and Tacoma. And here we are today with a groundbreaking ceremony at Terminal 5 uh, with the two of them as presidents today. So. Uh, their leadership, I, I, I just can't emphasize how strong it is and how blessed we are to have the two of them and, and the balance of the eight commissioners here supporting the Northwest Seaport Alliance. It's, it's certainly not always easy, yet it's worth it, and today proves that. So next, um, it's my privilege to introduce City Council uh, member Lisa Herbel to share a few words with us. Thank you, Lisa. Welcome. Uh, I want to also, like other folks have done, start off with my sincere thanks to the Northwest Seaport Alliance, the Port of Seattle, Commissioners, SS Marine, and of course, 
the International Longshoremen Workers Union, uh, Local 19, but I understand we also have workers represented by 52 and 98. Um, I want to thank the community for their participation in this long process that has led up to this moment. I can't tell you how many constituent emails I've received over the last three and a half years with really great ideas about what we could do with all this land. <laughs> and the number of times that I've sent um, links demonstrating to uh, my constituents that, no, actually there's a $500 million project planned here, and um, that project's going to be really good for, for our community and, and good for living wage jobs um, in Seattle and in, in the region. Um, I'm not only the council member that represents this district, but I also have oversight um, on the city council for issues related to economic development, so I really, I know and I appreciate how important it is for us to have diversified economy, uh, investment in workers, and, and in living wage jobs. Um, there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of excitement and interest about tech, um, but um, I'm a strong believer that when it comes to economic development, you don't put all your eggs in one basket, and um, maritime uh, industry has been historically so important to the growth and development and, um, and success of the city and so you got to remember to, to to dance with the ones who brought you um, and so I'm, I'm really excited about what the modernization of Terminal 5 is going to be able to do for our region. We're lucky to have Terminal 5 in our community. It boasts uh, naturally deep earth and an on-dock rail yard which of course as we all know allows containers to be directly loaded from the ship and onto rail lines. Um, the modernization project will allow for ultra large container ships and with these investments, we're expected to move 5.3 million containers by 2050. I want to thank the port uh, for addressing a lot of concerns that my constituents had early on in the project, including modern backup alarms to keep the noise down and workers safe, and for working with me to advocate for a quiet zone to reduce the noise created by train horns. I also want to thank Senators Nguyen and Frott for uh, successfully working um, in the state capital budget to allocate $4.4 million to support building shore power at Terminal 5. Um, and, and the port itself for supporting the electrification of Terminal 5. I think we all know that this is the direction that we need to move in, um, and we need to move it together with a singular focus on that goal. In Seattle, 66% of our, um, our emissions are um, derived from transportation, and so with electrification of our terminals, we can really move the bar on, on climate change for our city, um, set, a, set an example for, for the country, um, and that's, you know, that's, that's what the public expects us to do. They expect to see action in this area. Um, we have to be continue to be bold with our actions, and um, I also want to really thank the port for being such a good good neighbor uh, to the residents of District 1, and I trust they will continue to do so throughout the construction of the project. Um, there, there will be um, disruption and impacts, but I'm really excited and trust that um, we're going to continue to work together to um, address those impacts for the community and deliver a fantastic project. So, thank you. So, uh, being in the port business for quite a long time, I've seen those ports that are most successful. And one of the recipes of success is the partnership between ports and the city government. And so, Lisa's uh, leadership uh, with the city of Seattle and the relationship with the port is critical to our future success. So, thank you again for being here, Lisa. Uh, you know, when, when we embarked on this project, it wasn't just putting together a plan for construction. It took a commercial deal to come together to make this work. And um, I've been in uh, many conversations to put together uh, both simple and complex business deals. This one probably uh, was the most challenging. Um, and, and it was most challenging not because of the folks that were involved at the table. It was more about the, all of the moving pieces um, that were affecting uh, the outcome of this lease. And so it was a real challenge and it took some time. Yet we were successful in pulling that together. And one of the folks that uh, was instrumental in that uh, it was Ed DeNike, who's with us today representing SSA Marine. Uh, I've been in this industry a long time. I've met many tremendous people in this industry. And Ed is uh, 
one of the top. Uh, and uh, he is tough, he's fair, he's honest, and he cares about this gateway. And um, it's been an honor to get to know him and work with him. And uh, I'm pleased to uh, call him up an SSA a partner in this uh, terminal development. So with that, I'll ask Ed to come forward and share a few words with us. Good morning, everybody. As John had mentioned, uh, you know, we, SSA has around 25% of the man hours on this coast. We have uh, large terminals up and down the coast. And I can tell you that this was uh, the most complex deal that I've ever been involved in because it involves so many people. Uh, John and his staff were relentless on, on uh, opening Terminal 5. That's all they ever talked about, and they just wanted to figure out a way to do it. Uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, us, John, his staff, and four of the largest uh, international carriers involved. Uh, the first thing we had to do was come up with a to deal with our biggest competitor, uh, TIL, who was at Terminal 46. And I've got to also mention them, too. They have a, a very big part of this. They were uh, very good to work with. Their CEO, Alistair Smith, is, he's a tough guy, but he was very fair. And it took him and I a while for us to agree first which we did. Then we went to the port and we had to have Costco agree. We had to have OCL agree. We had to have MSC agree. Uh, and uh, when it was all over, I sit here today and it's, you know, in, in my mind, I just never really thought, or, you know, that, uh, when that positive we could get the thing done with all the players uh, involved, but we did. And again, uh, I've dealt with everybody on the, on the West Coast. Uh, you guys should be proud of the staff that you have. It's, uh, they did a very good job. Uh, SSA <clears throat> is investing a couple hundred million dollars on this terminal. Uh, not to mention close to 800 million over the next 30-something uh, years in guaranteed lease payments. You know, this is the port where SSA started, where Seattle Salvador started. And I can tell you, uh, one of the problems that we had is do we, it's scary. You see this big terminal, how are we going to fill it? Uh, and how are we going to commit all this money? But I can tell you that uh, the owners of SSA, uh, being from this area, wanted to do the most they can to make this area what it what it can be and should be. We're ordering the largest cranes on the west coast, 175 feet high. Uh, they can go uh, 25 feet or 25 tiers wide on the ship. They can go 12 high on the ship, which most cranes now can do 9 to 10 high. And I don't know uh, if there's any, there's no more than 175. Most cranes are 165, all the new cranes. The cranes in Tacoma are 165, the new ones. But we wanted to go 10 feet higher just in case we had to go one tier more. Yeah, all the dock equipment, all the equipment that's going to be, is going to be brand new. This was a requirement. Uh, from from the Northwest Port Seaport uh, Alliance, so everything we bring in here is going to be brand new Tier Four equipment. So uh, um, you know, we're proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> we feel also that this labor force here has the potential of being the top pr uh, productivity labor force on the West Coast. We look forward to uh, working with uh, all the locals here. You know, we sometimes we have arguments with each other, but I think we all want this port to be successful. And we all want to attract more volume to this area. Uh, 
One thing I, I do want to mention, uh, we call it Terminal 18 now. Uh, Terminal 18 did do over a million TEUs last year, but yesterday we had a record gate of this of any terminal uh, in the uh, PNW. We did over 4,000 trucks in eight hours. And it was, with, with no delays. So the uh, management and obviously the workforce, the clerks, longshoremen, everybody did a great job. When you can do 4,000 trucks without having any problems, you've done a good job. So that just proves to us that we're doing the right thing here in this port. The, uh, what's mentioned, the on-dock rail, you look at the on-dock rail, you're a terminal operator. The on-dock rail here is second to none on the coast. And we plan on someday seeing these big ships come in here, these massive cranes, working containers, uh, uh, the on-dock rail working every day. I mean, this is uh, something that we, as what we do in our business, something we dream about. And... Uh, we certainly think it's going to happen. Once this terminal is complete, it will be the showplace of uh, the Northwest by far. And I don't believe there's any container terminal on, on this West Coast that uh, is going to be able to compete with it. Saying that, I want to thank everybody, and we very much look forward in a few years to see what this terminal is going to look like. Thank you. Ed highlighted uh, some of the partners who were at the table in the negotiation, and I want to uh, emphasize a point he made. We had three carriers in the room, and, and I think it was the first time all three of them were sitting at the table talking about a deal together. It was a little bit awkward, yet yeah. um, they are the three, three of the largest carriers globally uh, that were talking about partnership at Terminal 5. So what that means is they can bring a lot of cargo here because they control a uh, majority of the cargo that is moving globally. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, our, our next speaker uh, is uh, Rich Austin. And Rich uh, is the president of Local 19. And I've gotten to know Rich uh, pretty well. Uh, in fact, uh, Rich and I have our regular, uh, I think, at least weekly conversations, sometimes uh, Friday evening as he's driving home. Um, and, uh, and I'm trying to uh, transition to the weekend. Uh, we have some good, good conversations. Uh, Rich is uh, someone that I really respect because, again, like Ed, he's tough, he's fair, he's honest. And um, something else I, I respect about Rich is um, he's got this tremendous talent of remembering every single mascot of any football team or school um, throughout the state of Washington. Um, if, if you get a chance, test him today. Walk up and throw a high school name out and he'll, he'll tell you the mascot. It's pretty amazing. So he's, he's a man of many talents. Um, Rich is a tremendous leader for Local 19. Uh, Lisa mentioned that we have other leadership from other locals here. It is truly a partnership with our ILWU that makes us go. And, um, and I am honored to call Rich a friend and colleague in this industry and ask Rich to come up and share a few words about Terminal 5. Thanks, Rich. Thank you, everybody. So full disclosure, you know, at these types of events, people approach me beforehand, Rich, what are you going to say? Because I think people have some concern. <laughs> so I don't want to disappoint Sean, Ed. That cake's too goddamn small. <laughs> and I hope that's not an indication of the amount of volume we're going to see here at Pier 5. Okay? So, unfortunately, some of you folks, you're not going to get any cake. <laughs> and this is all, all over the place. But let me uh, make some acknowledgments, if I could. So I want to acknowledge the Seaport Alliance and their staff, the commissioners, and all the hard, diligent work that they did. Uh, Mr. DeKnight from SSA being very aggressive, bringing more volume to Seattle. And the men and women of Local 19, 52, and 98 that are going to make this happen. But that's really what it comes down to. So.
This is an exciting day for me, and I know an exciting day for our, our locals. I made a living over here over about two decades, in the 90s and into the 2000s. So I bought my first house working here at Terminal 5. My son was born when I was working the on-dock rail. And I was sharing that story with some folks uh, before this event kicked off. Pretty exciting day for me as my business agent came over and said, hit the road, you're having a baby. Yeah. So he's 20 now, and he's paying dues, and I'm proud to say into the laborers, local 242 out of Everett. That's another exciting component of this project to see the building trades halls cleared out, put them to work, upgrading this facility, allowing us in local 1952 and 98 to be successful and the region to be successful in acquiring more cargo volume. That's exciting to us. What else is very exciting to hear that the equipment is going to be new, brand new, clean. We'll do our best to keep it that way. But also that there's going to be a spot for a human being in that piece of equipment. A steering wheel. So a taxpayer, a mother and a father, a little league coach, and a Sunday school teacher will be able to make a living and get back to their communities. That's probably what's most encouraging about hearing about the equipment. So um, we have a good partner in SSA. We, we do have our differences. Mr. Dyke has understood that um, I respect his right to be wrong when we have our discussions. <laughs> I'll always defend that. But we're going to find a resolution, a solution, and we're going to move forward and, and be productive and make this terminal and this port best in class. So I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. So you can see how easy your job is. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Rich, for, for your comments. And uh, I, I wanted to also acknowledge Steve Metrick, who's here with us today. Steve is the uh, executive director of the Port of Seattle. And it's a special relationship, the Port of Seattle and the Northwest Seaport Alliance and the Port of Tacoma, of course. And uh, Steve has been a tremendous partner with me and um, a tremendous leader for the Port of Seattle. Uh, they're really fortunate to have uh, brought him on board, and uh, he's doing great work, so great to have you here. So now I'd like to invite all our speakers and elected officials to join us uh, for a photo as we sign one of the piles that will be installed here at Terminal 5. And for the rest of you,